In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. In dure ibo adatari Dei. Adeo qui le tificat iubis uto meam. Qui autores Deus fortis uto mea, quare me perliste e quare justi sincero, nun afligi me in amicus.
Ma 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 Ma
Hugs for hobbies. Welcome spiritual to all. Oremus. Domini Jesu Christi, qui Maria et Jose, subditus in domesticam vitam, in effibilalius pertudibus consecrati pagnos utrusique auxilia familiae salti tui exemplis in truth et consortium consequae sempiterni qui vivus et regus Cum Deo Patri in unitati Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. The lessons from the epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Colossians. Brethren, put on as the elect of God, holy and beloved, the mantles of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any other even as Christ forgives you so also do ye forgive him above all these things put on charity which is the bond of perfection. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body. Be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell in you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Sing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God and the Father through Verum Domini, Deo Gracias.
of spiritual tools. Sequence Sancti Evangelii Secundum Luca. Gloria Tibi Domine. Now Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. And when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the Feast. When they had fulfilled the days and began their journey home, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. But Joseph and his mother knew not of it, supposing him to have been in the group of travelers. When a day journey, seeking him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances, not finding him, they turn back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. All that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answer. When they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrow. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Do ye not know that I must be about my father's business? And they did not understand the saying when he spoke unto them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sins in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. Lost in
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We greet you and we welcome you to this first Sunday after the Feast of the Epiphany. And it is also the Feast of the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. On this particular day, for the last time in the cycle of the liturgical year, the Church invites us to contemplate the mystery of Jesus' humble, hidden life. A feeling of close intimacy and tenderness characterizes this particular feast. And it is expressed in the liturgy. It is good for us to recall the little home at Nazareth and the simple life of those who lived there. For in it, Jesus learned Joseph's humble trade. And he grew in age and was happy sharing the work of a carpenter. We can imagine him saying, let the sweat trickle over my limbs before they are drenched with the torrent of my blood. And the pain of this labor shall go to atone for the sins of men. And today let us enter the little house in the presence of such humility, which conceals Jesus' infinite majesty. And let us repeat the words of the sacred text, Thou art indeed a hidden king, O God the Savior King of Israel. And before we actually talk about the life that was hidden in Nazareth. Let us recall the day when Jesus was brought into the temple of Jerusalem. And he was taken there that he might be offered to God, who had commanded the Jews to offer their firstborn sons to him in grateful commemoration of the destroying angel having spared their firstborn at the departure from Egypt, when all the firstborn of the Egyptians were slain, as recorded in Exodus 12. And these children had to be redeemed afterwards by certain gifts. And this offering was made on the 40th day, for according to the law, the mother's impurity lasted for this length of time after the birth of a boy child, after which she went to the temple, and in order to be declared purified, Mary made her offering of purification. This goes back to the Old Testament. Now you might ask the question, was Mary subject to this law of purification? And the answer is absolutely not. For she had not, like other mothers, conceived in sin. And therefore did not need purification. But she placed herself with her divine child among the sinners and fulfilled the law by which these were bound. St. Bernard says nothing was impure in her conception, nothing impure in her birth. There was nothing to be cleansed for the child itself was the origin of all purity and came into the world to purify it from sin. 
truly our Blessed Virgin Mary was not in need of purification, but she wanted to pass as a woman, an ordinary woman among women, as the Son of God also passed for a child among children. Mary complied with this law of purification. And she did this to give an example of obedience and true humility, for she interiorly thought little of herself and wished externally to be so regarded. To teach us to thank God for the many favors he bestows on us. He has shown to our ancestors, for the law of the Jews was given to encourage them to gratitude for the preservation of the firstborn of their ancestors from the hands of the destroying angel. And in order not to scandalize by being <coughs> regardless of this law, those who did not know that she was not required to observe it. And we as Christians must learn from Mary's example to be truly humble and <coughs> obedient and to be grateful to Almighty God for the benefits which our ancestors and parents have received. Me. And that we must be on guard never to give scandal by failing to observe the commandments of God and his church. We are also told that Mary offered doves at the uh, service of purification. And she offered doves because she was poor. And she was not ashamed to appear as such before the world. Mary loved humility and poverty and the poverty connected with it. And I say to you, church, be not ashamed. Therefore, if you are poor, if you have poverty, <coughs> and the more, but if you're rich, be poor in spirit and love the poor and those who do not have. We recall that when Mary brought the child Jesus to the temple, he met with Simeon and Anna. And he was brought there because he was a pious and faithful service, servant of God and had been promised him that he should not die until he had seen the Savior. This is Simeon. And when Jesus was brought into the temple, Simeon was inspired by God to go there also. And when he found Jesus there, he by divine inspiration knew him to be the Messiah and gave testimony of him. In church, you see how God rewards those who sincerely love and serve him, giving himself to them to be known always more and more. And Simeon was ready to die when he had held Jesus in his arms because his wish was fulfilled. He had not only seen with his own eyes, but he held in his arms the desired of all nations, for whom the patriarchs had so vainly longed. What more could he wish than to leave this miserable world and commend his spirit into the hands of his Savior? We have been given a beautiful picture of the Holy Family 
St. Joseph, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the Child Jesus. In the book of Ecclesi Ecclesiasticus, we find a very beautiful description about Moses in the 45th chapter of Ecclesiasticus. And we'll, I'll go refer to that a little later. But about St. Joseph, of the royal blood of David was a carpenter <coughs> in Nazareth of Galilee. This is where he was espoused to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And the Gospel praises no, no. Joseph of Galilee, calling him a just man, chosen by God from among men to be the foster father of Christ, who was subject to him as he was to his blessed mother. The history of his childhood and youth has not been preserved. And of it, as of the rest of his life, we know only that which is related by the evangelists. As we do not read that he was present at the marriage feast in Cana, where Jesus performed his first miracle with his mother. It is supposed that before the commencement of Christ's ministry, he died a happy death in the arms of Jesus and Mary. Getting back to the book of Ecclesiasticus, 45th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Speaking of Moses, he was beloved of God and men whose mercy is in benediction. He made him like the saints in glory and magnified him in the fear of his enemies. And with his words he appeased monsters. He glorified him in the sight of King and gave him commandments in the sight of his people and showed him his glory. He sanctified him in his faith and meekness, and him increase among his people. He gave him the blessing of all nations and confirmed his covenant upon his head. He acknowledged him in his blessings. He preserved for him his mercy, and he found grace before the eyes of the Lord. He glorified him in the sight of kings and gave him a crown of glory. He made an everlasting covenant with him and gave him a great priesthood and made him blessed in glory to execute the office of the priesthood and to have praise in his name and to offer him worthy incense for an odor of sweetness. What is said here in the book of Ecclesiasticus, as I said before, refers to Moses. And this, my dear friends, may justly be applied to St. Joseph. For which reason the church chooses this lesson for referring to him. That St. Joseph was beloved of God and is shown by his being chosen the foster father of the very Son of God, Jesus Christ. His memory is in benediction. And how could it be otherwise than blessed? He was the foster father of him who from the commencement of the world as its creator blessed all creatures and who by his death as Redeemer procured blessings and graces for us 
who on account of our sins deserve the very curse of God. God has placed St. Joseph with the saints and glorified him before all kings. For he was not only of royal blood, but he was foster father to the king of kings. His humility, his purity, his faithful love of Mary enabled him while on earth to hear the tender voice of Jesus. God has also brought him into a cloud that has taken him up to heaven, where he now sees him face to face and is a most powerful ancestor and intercessor for mankind. The reason the Blessed Virgin Mary was espoused to Joseph was because St. Jerome gives us the following answer to this question. That by Joseph's descent from the house of David, it might be established that Jesus and Mary belong to the same line. For in the old law, a woman was not permitted to marry out of her own tribe. When there were no male heirs, and that Mary might not be stoned to death as she would have been if found unmarried with child. That Christ might not be regarded as an illegitimate child and be therefore despised and repudiated and, and that. As St. Ignatius the martyr says, the birth of Christ thus might remain concealed from the devil who therefore believed that Christ was not born of a virgin, but of a wife. And finally, that Mary might have consolation and assistance as at the time of the flight with Jesus into Egypt. You might ask, why did St. Joseph wish to leave Mary privately, as the Bible indicates? And that was because he was not instructed concerning the divine mysteries and could not, from her pure, blameless life, understand Mary's condition. And he was too char charitable to think or assert evil of her or put her to shame. Mary did not reveal these mysteries to him because of the humility which she loved so much that she would rather be suspected of evil than reveal the great grace which God had shown her. And besides, she also trusted that God himself would care for her and make her innocence manifested. Mm -hmm. Saint Alphonsus Liguori writes that the example of Christ, who so highly venerated Saint Joseph while on earth, and who during his whole life was obedient to him, should suffice to inspire all hearts with devotion to this great saint. And he whom the King of Kings placed so high indeed deserves special veneration from all mankind. And to encourage this veneration, St. Teresa wrote, I do not remember that I ever prayed to St. Joseph for anything which he did not procure for me. The great graces God has given me through him and the many dangers of body and soul from which he has preserved me. He is a glorious saint, and he assists us in our need. And St. Joseph is mainly known as the patron of a happy death. And I suggest that you 
learn to venerate him as you do all the other saints. You don't hear so much of people talking about Saint Joseph, but he completed the Holy Family. And in today's liturgy, it particularly emphasizes one typical aspect of the humble life of our hidden Lord, obedience. Although he was the Son of God, he learned to obey. And you know, obedience is such a hard job for many of us. Even in the clergy and in religious life. We worship, we pray, but it's so hard for us to be obedient. And obedience is so important until the scriptures tells us that obedience is better than sacrifice. Hopefully we will learn to be obedient. As I said before, although Jesus was the son of God, he learned to obey and he humbled himself becoming obedient even unto death. From Bethlehem to Calvary, Obedience was his companion. The Gospel in Luke, the second chapter, stresses this obedience of Jesus at Nazareth in words which carry for all time the strength of their first utterance. It reads, he was subject to them, meaning Mary and Joseph. And let us ask ourselves with St. Bernard, who obeyed? Whom did he obey? And the saint replies, God obeyed man. Yes, the God to whom the angels are subject was subject to Mary. And not only to Mary, but also to Joseph. For God to obey a woman in his humility without parallel, church. Learn then man to obey. Learn on earth to be submissive. God subjected himself to men. And do you, <coughs> desiring to rule others, place yourself above your creator? We found in our gospel that when Jesus was 12 years old, Mary and Joseph were looking for him. And I'd like to recall that the only time we see Christ is at his birth, when he was presented in the temple, when he was 12 years old, and when he was with his mother at the wedding feast when he began his public ministry. And when he was 12 years old, he said to his mother and father after they were looking for them, did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Here's Jesus who was humble and submissive, did not hesitate to make this reply to Mary when she gently questioned him about having remained behind in the temple without her or Joseph's knowledge. While they in anguish had been seeking him for three days. You know, we tend to read scripture and just pass over it. But you who are parents, imagine your child being away from you and you have no idea where that child is. If it's for an hour, you panic. What, for three days? <laughs> These are the first words of Jesus which we find recorded in the gospel. He spoke them in order to declare his mission and to affirm the primacy of the rights of God. When hardly an adolescent, Jesus taught us that God when, uh, that he taught us the rights of Almighty God. Jesus taught us that God 
and the things of God must always come first. He sounded like he was retorting his mother, but he knew that God and the things of God came before anything else. God must always come first. He must hold the first place in our lives. He's the cause of our lives. And we must obey him regardless of all other considerations. I don't care what you have to do, where you have to go. God should come first in your life. Because if he forgot you for one second, what would you do? Where would you be? We must put him first, even if it means sacrificing the rights of nature and of blood. Yielding to relatives and friends is no longer a virtue. It may even be sinful if it leads us away from the will of God or hinders our fulfillment. We better watch how we place our interest in other things. It is only because of God that we're able to do what we do, that we're able to be what we are, You better stop putting him for the Sundays when you come to church. Even for Bible study on Wednesday, we should talk to the Lord every day of our lives. We should learn to pray as a family. I remember Archbishop Sheen used to say, the family that prays together stays together. You know, this year we have a task, each one of us, to bring someone to Christ, to a saving knowledge. And I always say that mission fields begin at home. If we can get our family members to pray together, perhaps they would be willing to come out and worship the Lord with you. Giving precedence to the rights of God does not imply that we neglect our duties toward our neighbor. Today's feast calls our attention to these obligations, especially to those concerning family, natural or religious. Natural meaning husband, wife, and children as a result of your union. Religious, all of us who come together are brothers and sisters. No one is higher than the other. This is why we must show and express love all the time and be cognizant of each person's feelings. We must be like the Holy Family of Nazareth. And to this end, we're shown the virtues that we could practice. Clothe yourself with mercy, benignity, humility, modesty, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. We must imitate the Holy Family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Oh. Uh-huh. 
Hiki est an kalt sangs me novi et attorney testament Mysterium fidei, qui provodis et promaltis in fundatio, in remission picatorum.
Amen. Amen. Per ipsum et cum ipso ad ipso et tibi Deo Patri omnipotenti in unitati spiritu sancti omnes honet gloria. Per omnia secula, secula horum. Amen. O Remus. Precepita salitaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, al Deimus dicere, Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sancti vice tor nomem tuam, adveniat regnum tuam, fiat voluntas tua, sicud in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum, da nobis hotie, et dimiti nobis debita nostra, sicud et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas, in tentationem. Sed ira nos amado. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini, sit semper, volvihis cum. Et cum spiritu tuo.
Ece agnius Dei, ece qui toli picat mundi.
Quos celestibus, previce sacramentis fal, Domini Eusu salvi familiae tuae, exempla, fugitur irritavi, ut in homere mortis nostre, o corrente gloriosi virgine, matre tuae cum beati Iosef, per te in eterni tabernacula, Reshep i me reamo, vi vivas et regnus cum Deo Papi, in unitati, Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus Bobiscum, Echo Spiritus Tuo, Ite Messiah, Deo Gracias. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum, et Spiritus As in nomine Domini Benedictum, et unusum tuae seculum, agitorium nostrum in nomine Domini, qui fece celum et terum. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctum,
says, I'd just like to say to all, I love you all. I love you too. Priests love you. Love you too. Let us remember the goals of the church. Change your attitudes. Evangelization of God's people. And to restore all things in Christ. We started the nine day novena to the Santa Nino. I've had many questions concerning the Santa Nino. Why do we have to worship and adore the child? Did you not hear Monsignor speak about a 12 year old boy? That 12 year old boy is also the same Jesus. Amen. We must remember. And this is where Protestant tendencies come into church. We forget that the same Jesus is the same yesterday, yes. today, and forever. Yes. So if you worship Jesus as a baby, no problem. If you worship him at 12 years old, no problem. If you worship him at 30 years old, no problem. He's the same who? Jesus. We say to our Protestants that the Catholic Church worships Jesus and venerates the saints. The day is the Holy Family. We renovate St. Joseph. As Monsignor Jackson so eloquently stated, St. Joseph, terror of demons, Joseph most just. St. Joseph was a great man in that he had to take a responsibility that not too many people would take. And Mary, our mother, goes without saying. Isn't that true? Amen. We love the Santo Nino. Why? Because we have Filipinos in our church, Amen. here at the Cathedral of St. Peter and Paul, and we have a Filipino church in the Philippines. Amen. Santa Nino is our Santa Nino. And he is this church in Spain, in Puerto Rico, in the Caribbean, and in South America. Though... The Santa Nino looks a little different in those areas as where his dress, he's still the little child. We worship the little child. We want to say to Father Vincent Valenciano and to Sister Teresa that we congratulate you and your country and also to Father Plaza in the Philippines. We pray to Santo Nino, the child Jesus, to help us, to help us here with our troubles in the United States as you perform miracles in the Philippines, perform one for us. I guarantee you that if you pray the novena, nine days, you will come out okay in closing. I was introduced to the Santa Nino way before Father Vincent Valenciano became our associate pastor. Sister Teresa went to the Philippines. I was very sick. And she said, your eminence, you have to pray to the Santa Nino. And I looked at her as a Santa Nino. <laughs> so I can certainly understand mom subs. Santa Nino? <laughs> Who is Santa Nino? Now I know who Santa Nino is, the little Jesus. The holy child, just the holy child. Oh, when you worship the holy child, you can say, holy child Jesus. And if you say that, he'll give you salvation just like if he was 30 years old. You know why? Monsignor said something so delicate that they took the child to the temple and he was what? Circumcised. He shed 
his blood, even as a child for our salvation. Isn't that wonderful? I remember Sister Blandina telling me about a young lady on her job, about the infant of Prague. Remember, when we were children, we had the infant of Prague. The same Santa Nina looks just like him a little bit. Same baby Jesus. So, today, we march and process to the Santa Nino for a few moments of prayer. And then the second Sunday is the Sunday where the leadership will have their President's Council meeting in the Hall of the Benedictions. Please be obedient, Presidents, Vice Presidents, Secretaries, and Treasurers. Go and hear the information needed for the rest of of the year. I want to thank you for all of your gifts today. Keep on giving. And young people who are married, keep on having babies. We need more babies. We need more babies. More babies and more babies. No contraceptives. The Catholic Church does not believe in contraceptives nor abortions. Because they are intrinsically evil acts. More babies. And More babies. as Bishop of the Lord's Church in the traditional Roman Catholic Church, we do not believe in abortions. Can you shout that out? We do not believe in abortions. Euthanasia. Euthanasia. Cloning. Cloning. Same-sex marriage. Same-sex marriage. Same-sex union. Same-sex union. Homosexual activity. Homosexual activity. We are Christians. We are Christians. Proud Catholics. Proud Catholics. Amen. 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 Let's praise the Lord. Amen. No. No. So, young people, you have to have babies if you're married. And if you can't have babies, you have to adopt them. All the babies. Young girls and young boys, you must maintain your purity. That's what the Holy Family is all about. Purity of the heart and purity of the body. No sexual relations before marriage. Ah, that's a subject that no one likes. Amen. Amen. So Sister Micah and all the other young ladies that are married, Brother Emmanuel, after this baby, another baby, another year from now. And more and more babies so that we can baptize them. Amen. Amen. Let us turn now as we sing together. I ask that we play the O Come, Let Us Adore Him in the Steubenville. Very good day. The altar is beautiful, isn't it? Yes. Yes. The Holy Family. I ask that our sergeant there in the back, the one that's always controlling all things in the back, please turn the lights on for us in the smaller chapel. We're going to the Santini. Amen. Is Teresa here? Yes. Oh, Teresa, you must go with me. And we must take pictures. of Prague is also called the Little King. <coughs> Teresa, come. Father, take a picture of Teresa. <laughs> She's our Filipino. And we are proud to have her. As we go in procession, on next Sunday we celebrate Santa Nino. Oh, um, everyone.
making them to himself small enough for his creatures to deceive. Small enough for his area. creatures to see. Isn't it beautiful? Yes. And yet he is Lord of all. And he's still Lord of all. Very reverently. You are Lord of all. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are risen from the dead. You are Lord. Consecrate today our thoughts of you. Only with you shall they be occupied. Our words only of you shall they speak. Our sufferings, that we may endure them for your sake. We beg you, Senor Santa Nina, illuminate our understanding, kindle our wills, cleanse our body, sanctify our soul. We wish what you wish, because you wish, as you wish, as long as you wish. Grant us, Senor Santo Nino, that we may feel love towards you, be strict toward ourselves, be zealous toward our fellow men, and rightly despise the things of the world. Help us to overcome sensuality with strict discipline, avishness with generosity, anger with gentleness, indolence with zealous industry. Make us wise in counsel, courageous in danger, patient in adversity, humble and prosperity. Teach us, dear Santa Nino, how worthless is this world, how sublime is heaven, how brief is time, how long is eternity. Grant us, Senor Santa Nino, lastly, that we may remember you, adore you, love you, and serve you here on earth, that we may be happy with you forever and ever in heaven. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Jesus, hear us. Jesus, graciously hear us. In every need, let us come to you with humble trust. Santa Nina, help us. 
in our doubts, perplexities, and temptations. Father, me, you help us. In hours of loneliness, weariness, and trials. Father, me, you help us. In the failure of our plans and hopes. Father, me, you help us. In disappointments, troubles, and sorrows. Father, me, you help us. When others fail us and your grace alone can help us. Father, me, you help us. When we throw ourselves on your tender love as our only refuge. Father, me, you help us. When we are ill and our head and hands cannot work and we are lonely. Father, help us. When we feel impatient and our cross irritates us. Father, help us. Always in spite of weakness, failings, and shortcomings of every kind. Father, help us. Santa Nino helped the people in the Philippines, in South America, Puerto Rico, and the Caribbean, and in Spain. Santa Nina, help us. Lamb of God who takes away the sin to the world. Lamb of God who takes away the sin to the world. Lamb of God who takes away the sin to the world. Jesus, hear us. Jesus, graciously hear us. Let us pray. O Santa Nina, who has said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Give we beseech you to us who ask the gift of your divine love that we may love you with our whole heart. <coughs> In word and work and never cease from showing forth your praise. Make us, O Lord, to have a perpetual fear and love of your holy name. For you never fail to govern them whom you do solidly establish in your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Oh, miraculous Santa Nino, we kneel before your sacred image. We beseech you to cast a merciful look on our troubled hearts and on our troubled world and our troubled homes. Santa Nino, help the children of the world. Please, take from us all unbearable affliction and despair for your sacred infancy's sake. Hear our prayers, send us consolation and aid, that we may praise you. Santa Nino, we ask for a miracle here at Cathedral Saints Peter and Paul, yes. that many more souls yes. will be added to the church, yes. children for our confraternity yes. of Christian doctrine. Yes. Young people will come, yes. and we will beget other young people, young families, Please grant this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Santa Nino, pray, pray for us. Holy God, we praise thy name. church in the Philippines, the celebration of the Santa Nino on next Sunday. Sister, I want you to speak in Tagalog to your family, members, and let them know that we're grateful here for Santa Nino. Yes. And speak to the priest also and encourage him in the Philippines. Just speak a word to him on the plaza. Nangangamusta po ako sa inyo, Father Plaza. Nagpapasalamat po kami sa mga dalangan ninyo. At sa ngayong, kami, ngayong linggo po, mag, magse-celebrate po kami ng Feast of the Santo Nino. Kasama po sa celebration sa Cebu. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Father Nathan, please come and say a word to those in the Philippines for us. And for just a second, just explain from your experience as a priest, your experience of in the Philippines about the Santonia. Just for seconds, and speak to Father Plaza and encourage him. In we don't need to hear it, and then you can explain it. Um, ang Santonia ay isang polar na devotion sa Pilipinas. Lahat ng at sa lahat ng siyudad, lahat ng barrio, merong celebration, uh, fiesta. At uh, ngayong Enero, ang uh, big time na celebration sa Cebu, ito yung parokya ni Father Harold Plaza. So, o malapit kay Father Harold Plaza. So, uh, Father Harold, uh, sana maging uh, maayos ang celebration dyan. Uh, alam po maraming tao na pupunta sa sinulog yes, sinulog so kainan lahat pero sana huwag natin malimutan uh, na pinakamahalaga si Kristo si Jesus uh, naging sanggol naging tao uh, para maging kasama natin so uh, for all people in Manila though you are pa far from, from Cebu I know that uh, you all also will be celebrating this coming Sunday the feast of the Santo Niño de Cebu. And the beginning of Christianity in the Philippines is uh, from this image. So we thank all the all those people who uh, became instrumental of uh, Christianization of the Philippines, especially the friars, the Spanish friars. Uh, of course, it, it had it evolved. And uh, just as we have our evangelization process here in the cathedral, evangelization will, is still continuing. And not everything is good, but something is, 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 will be better. And I hope the Santo Nino, the Santo Nino devotion will help uh, all Catholic, Filipino Catholics, wherever you are. Not only in Manila, not only in, in here United States, those uh, uh, Philippine Catholics in London, in Europe, in Saudi Arabia, and everywhere, Australia, uh, we will all be celebrating. Those of you who, will be, who are watching this YouTube, uh, next Sunday will be a uh, global celebration. Amen. So, uh, for all Filipinos. And uh, uh, let's pray for the conversion. I think that's the most important thing. As uh, Archbishop and Monsignor and we priests here are always uh, 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 putting into our homilies, it's the change of 